Hey, it's Joel. Scooters are all the rage right now. Kids are riding them, adults are riding them, everybody's having a really good time at scooter parks and skate parks. There's even really cool videos online. I know one of the more popular ones is by Claudius? Claudio? Claudius? He's a good fellow down in, I think, California. Does lots of tips and tricks and encourages kids to get moving around. It's a lot of fun. Well, what I wanted to do, I wanted to see if we could 3D print one of these wheels for the scooter. And we did. We went through a few iterations, but we came to something that well, looks like this. Did it work? Well, we'll find out right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Ah, welcome back. Scooter wheels are nothing really special. You have the wheel and it looks like this. And then you've got this spacer that looks like this. And then you have these two bearings. And if they look really familiar, it's because these are the heart of many of the fidget spinners out there that people made themselves and that people bought in stores. So I can get dimensions from a wheel like this and I have plenty of fidget spinner bearings left over from the fidget spinner days. This shouldn't be too difficult. Let's go to Fusion 360 and design us a rudimentary wheel. So we wanna make a really rudimentary wheel, not too bad. Let's go up here to create a sketch. I'm gonna create on the ground plane and hit C and I'm gonna bring out from the center a circle that is 22.1 millimeters. I'm gonna hit enter a few times. 22.1 because 22 millimeters is the outer diameter of a bearing and I usually give 0.2 millimeters for clearance. And so if I take off 0.1 millimeters for clearance, I know that it's gonna be a really, really snug fit, which is what I want, which then gives us 22.1. I'm gonna hit C and bring out another circle that is 110 millimeters. And I say 110 because my son David says 110 millimeter wheels are awesome and he wants some. You got it, David. I'm gonna click here and hit E for extrude and I'm going to extrude it 24.2 millimeters. That's the height of the previous wheel. Easy enough. I'm gonna click here hold down shift in the center button and then move it, click here. I'm gonna hit F for fillet. Oops, I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit. Maybe 1.5? Yeah, 1.5. We'll bring it in 1.5 millimeter. Millimeters? Yes. That's it. That is our rudimentary wheel. Now all we have to do is save that out as an STL and print it. Ta-da. Well, let's move this aside. Whoa. We have a wheel. This wheel is printed in a random PETG I found on, and I put it on my Artemis. And the design, as you can tell, is really simple, but there's a problem. My son wanted 110 millimeter wheels, and he said, those are cool, Dad. You should make one of these, Dad. So I did. The problem is this scooter only takes 100 millimeter wheels. So we were unable to actually put this one on his scooter, but it's tough. It's just, as you can see, a little too large. So what we need to do now is reduce this. We need to make the outermost diameter 100 millimeters. The inside stays the same. Let's go back to Fusion 360 and fix that. 110 millimeters doesn't quite fit on the scooter. So we need to take it back to the standard 100. Here's how you do that. Over in Fusion, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna hit the right mouse button and say Edit Sketch. I'm then gonna go where it says 110, I'm gonna double click it, I'm gonna type in 100 and I'm gonna hit Enter. Click Stop Sketch over here, bam, and there we go. We now have a wheel that's 100 millimeters in diameter. I love how that works. Let's print it out. So this was our original one. This, well, this is our new one. How did it look like this? Well, we went outside and we tested it. <laughs> it's making noises, but it seems to be working. <laughs> what happened? Let's see. Let's see. Wow. <laughs> so can you ride it anymore? Does it still go? That was a good test. It was a good test. It was just a test. We get stronger, don't we? Yeah. 
I think the test was successful because it was able to go onto his scooter and I was able to get the bearings on the inside. There was no rubbery outer coating, not this time. I wasn't too worried about that. What I wanted to know is would it roll? And he was rolling it just fine and then he started doing jumps and well, the bearings just tore right through the PETG plastic. That's okay. We had not a lot of infill, not a lot of perimeters, not a lot of top or bottom layers. And the reason was because this was just a test and I wanted to print it fast. This is full of plastic and took forever. This one, not so much. But because it's not full of plastic, it's going to fail spectacularly. And that's exactly what happened. Let's go back to Fusion 360 and design one with an integrated tire. Now we have this wheel. Let's make that new one. We need to make one that, uh, that has a tire on it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to rectangle. Actually, I'm just going to click this right up here. I'm going to bring it out this way. And I know it's going to be 24.2 tall. And I know it's going to be 100. No, wait. It's going to be 50 millimeters because I'm going to revolve this around here, making it 100 in total. And now what I need to do is create a line over here and go down here. And it needs to be a right angle. Great. This is, this is perpendicular to, to this line. It's parallel to this line. But what I want to do is hit D for dimension, go over here, here, and I want it to be 10. 10 millimeters, that's pretty easy. So at this point, this is how we need to create the tire. So I'm gonna hit L for line. I'm gonna go from here and up, and I'm gonna specify 90 degrees at a right angle, take away 30, that leaves us with 60. And 60, and then hit tab, so that's locked in. There we go. I'm gonna bring it right up to there. And now this is where it gets kind of fun. I'm gonna take a line and I'm gonna bring it right down the center. I'm gonna hit escape. And now I'm gonna click the line and hit X. And this makes it a construction line. So I'm gonna go sketch, mirror. So object is this. Mirror line is this. And it brings it right over to there. And I'm gonna hit okay. Well now, you know, watch this. We know where midpoint is because it'll give us that little triangle. Let's bring that across. And then let's hit escape, click on it, and hit X for a construction line. So it means what we're gonna do is go mirror, and I'm gonna select this, and this is the object, and this is the mirror line, and I'm gonna hit OK. That was easy. The other thing I can do, I can hit T for trim, and I can click these lines that I no longer need here and then this one and this one and I think you can probably see what I'm doing this is going to become the tire this is going to become well the wheel oh there's one more thing that we need to remember but let's do this first so now what I can do is go to create revolve click this hold down shift and click this the axis is this and make sure it's a new body, direction one side, 360 degrees, that's all fine, hit okay. That's not too bad, but we did it in the wrong order. So let's do this. Let's click this and go up to sketch, I'm sorry, create, revolve, and then the axis is here, and this is the same, it's all a new body, so hit okay. I'm gonna go back to that sketch and turn it on. I'm gonna click this, go create, revolve on this, and then the axis is this line here, but I don't want it to be a join. I want it to be a new body. I'm gonna hit okay. There we go. Let's turn off that sketch. So now we have two bodies. Body one being the wheel. Body two, well, body two is the tire. Well, this is probably a better way to say it. Body one is the wheel. Body two is the tire. But in body one, we're missing a spot for the bearing. So we need to turn the sketch back on and we need to edit the sketch. And now what we need to do is remember, the bearing is gonna fit in the center and the bearing is, I want 22.1 millimeters as the diameter of that bearing hole. And all you need to do is go here with an align, hit escape. And then I'm gonna click here, hit D to here. I'm going to change that so to 22.1 divided by 2, which will give us 11.05. Now stop the sketch. And so now when I go back here to this revolve, I can unclick that, hit OK, and there's our bearing hole. That's kind of fun. 
So now what I need to do is I need to export these as separate STLs. So I can just uncheck the bodies that I don't want. That looks good. And I can hit right click, save as STL. And then I uncheck the bodies I don't want. I check the bodies I want and I right click, I save as STL. And I send them to the printer and then we print them. So remember, this was before. Now we went to something that looks like this. How does it look like this? Well, we tested it. Uh, give it a shot. Sure. <laughs> okay, that was expected. Yes, it was. That was expected. But look at, look at the tire worked just great. Yeah. All right, let's take it inside. So that worked. Look, at there's a little bit of a wear pattern. It'd be curious to see how that would wear. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then that. There we go. But hey. Yeah? It was a good test. It was a good test. Again, this was printed with very little infill, not a lot of perimeters, not a lot of top layers or bottom layers. And I knew it was going to break, but the test was just to make sure that this could slip over and become a tire. The print here, this wasn't printed with a lot of plastic either. I think it was 5% infill, two perimeters and a couple top and, you know, a couple layers top and bottom, but this didn't break. It did scratch a bit, but it didn't break. And this, worked it fit within here the bearings fit within here now what we need to do is print this with more plastic and we need to print this with more plastic and then we test it let's do it not all failures happen while testing some happen during the printing and it was it was a little little rough getting these to print on my task six with that it works 3d head i did have some issues but i was able to work through those and we got ourselves a print this is what it looked like after testing. Let me take you to what it looked like during the install and then we test it and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it right here. That. Look at it. It's crazy. It is. Okay, give it a go whenever you're ready. I don't... Uh. It works. Whoa, wait, is it still working? Yeah. Well, go back. You're really, you're really hitting it hard, aren't you? Yeah. It works. Wow. Does it work? It, it works, but it's not as good. It's not as good, why? Because it's slower and it's not as strong. Oh, it's slower and so you can't get up the speed to do a jump? No. Well, okay. I can, but not enough speed to like, jump the pyramid. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Well, thanks for helping me test, David. Yeah. Go have fun. Wow, first of all, David did a fantastic job. And second, this performed better than I could have imagined. I want you to take a look at this. <laughs> Look, look at how broken that is. That is crazy, but it did survive. The, the wheel itself survived. The tire stretched out a little bit. 
I think that uh, I, I think that a flexible material might not be the best choice. It does seem to stretch. Maybe I need to adhere it or just have less of it. I don't know. But the wheel itself, the 50% infill, five top and bottom layers, seven perimeters. This this held on great. You could tell at the skate park it was going. It was a little bit slow, but that's okay. I think we had a lot of fun though. I think that was a lot of fun. Well, a big thanks for joining us on that ride. We tested and we verified that yes, you can 3D print your own scooter wheels, but it may not be as fast and it may not stand the test of time, but boy howdy, that was a lot of fun. Big thanks for everybody that watched. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.